I don't think there's anything that a gardener could want more than completely free plants that you don't have to pay anything for or even go and get from anywhere else other than your own garden. And that's why today I'm going to be speaking about the easiest things to propagate and how to propagate different things. So there's four main ways that you can do this and I'll speak about these throughout the video. And make sure you watch until the end and I'll show you how to take some cuttings from a few of the plants that I've got in my garden. So the first main way that you can do this is by taking cuttings from things. And there's normally the best times to do things for each different plant. But you can do cuttings most of the year round. So in here I've got a dahlia cutting which I took earlier in spring. And it's doing really, really well actually. I'm quite happy with it. I took two cuttings this year from my dahlia. It looks, I think it's a candy cane dahlia. And yeah, so I took two cuttings. This one's the only one that rooted and they're really vigorous at rooting. They, you put the thing in the soil and it roots almost straight away. Something else you can take cuttings from, which is very easy, which is actually an annual and it's not perennial, is tomatoes. This was grown from seed, but you'll get the same effect when you grow from a cutting. And what you can do, you can either take the tops that you pinch out and plant them in the soil, or any suckers that come out the side, you can snap off and put them in the soil. And tomatoes are so easy because if you look on them, they've got lots of little hairs on them. And each individual hair is a potential root. So as soon as that hair will start having moisture quite a lot, so it's when they're in the soil for example, the roots will come out. So that's why if you want a sturdy tomato, you plant it deep and plant the stalk quite deep in the ground. And that means that the roots will come out and there'll be multi layers of roots, which will mean you have a stable plant and it will be able to absorb lots and lots of nutrients and moisture. And now I'm going to show you another plant which I've grown from cuttings which is really quite easy. So I just got this tray of currant cuttings that I grew from last year. And these are, I can't remember whether they're red currants, white currants or black currants, because I'm really bad at labeling things, as you know. And these are actually doing really well. And as you can see, there's some good roots coming on them. And what I'll be doing with these this year, hopefully once the carpet over there has smothered all the weeds out and I've got a new bed. Uh, this is going to be my growing on bed. So what I'll do is I'll put these and anything I've grown from seed into that bed and I'll grow them into mature adult plants. And then I'll be able to grow them on and put them out into the garden where they can fruit or flower or whatever the plant is. They can go in and give us good show or give us good crops or both. And make sure you watch around until the end where I'll be showing you how you can take some cuttings of some of your own currants today or whenever you next get out in your garden because it's really easy and I really want to get some more currant plants especially white currant plants so I'll be showing you that at the end of the video so make sure you stick around and so the next easy way that you can get free plants out of your garden is saving seeds and here I've got some lupins where I've not deadheaded some of these stalks I've let the, the uh, seed heads sort of just grow on there and then what I'll do is I'll save these seeds once they've dried out a bit more and they've developed and I can grow them next year then. But you can also buy seeds, but again that's spending money and if you're going to have free seeds you may as well buy it, uh, save them yourself. And this is a really easy way of doing it really, it's just like by using shop bought seeds and sometimes they tend to germinate even better, especially if you are an organic garden. And Apologies about that buzzing, there was just a bumblebee trying to attack my camera. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different seed heads coming on here. And the other thing is you can even let them spread themselves. So if you leave the seeds there, and you shake it maybe when they dry out a bit more, that will disperse the seeds naturally, and you'll get them growing up everywhere. So for example, with the foxgloves here, they were self-seeded, and that's because when the seed heads were ready last year, I went and I shook them a bit, and that spreads the seeds out and they'll all grow up as next year as new strong plants. And as you can see here, we've got our first ever naturally occurring white foxglove this year. Normally we have these purple ones, but there's a white one this year which was really exciting to find in the garden and we've never had one of them before. And an example of a plant grow from home and save seed is this dwarf sunflower. And I've got loads of these around the garden 
and these are doing really really well they did have a bit of a slug damage at the start and some of them did get lost to that, those slugs but these are doing really well now and hopefully they'll go on to flower I've got some sunflower patches of them around the garden I've got some by my currants and another by my other patch of currants actually and these they, they were just str straightforward I put them in a seed envelope over winter after saving them last autumn and then I planted them out this spring and well you wouldn't tell the difference would you they look exactly the same as if you got them from the shop bought seeds and that goes the same with most things I also saved some mustard seeds last year or mustard uh, mustard leaf seeds for salads and I haven't grown them yet I'm going to grow them further on in the summer towards the end of summer to give us a bit of a more prolonged crop when some of the things aren't growing as well towards the end of the summer when the weather's changing a bit because they will go to seed if you plant them in the heat of summer so I'm going to wait towards the end to plant sow them in August maybe in the greenhouse and then I'll plant them out and yeah so saving seeds it couldn't be any simpler and you as you can see you can't you really can't tell the difference between shop bought and home saved seeds because once they grow they'll be the same plants and as long as you let the seeds develop properly on the plant they'll be fine because if you don't let them develop enough these seeds they could give you poor germination rates and also they could give you weaker plants in the future which is not good so if you let them develop properly and if you want to take away the risk of them dispersing themselves or any birds eating them what you can do is you can get like a, a jewellery bag and you can put this over or a paper bag and you tie it around or if it's drawstring you tie it around and this will catch all the seeds you turn it upside down cut the top off take it out and then you've got all your seeds in a bag ready to be stored and then grown next year I'd just like to make sure that you've gone down below and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to make sure you're notified next time I upload a video. Another way of getting completely free plants is by dividing things. So if they're spread a bit like the Nifophia here or the, the grass like the pampas grass or most grasses will, you can dig them out over autumn or winter normally or spring but some things do get divided in the summer but you dig them up essentially and you just you get a spade in or you gently prise them apart and you split them into separate clumps and then you can grow these on in your flower beds or in the ground and these will grow on I'm being a bit attacked by this pampas grass here so I'm going to cut this one back this winter I think and let it grow back again because I cut this back every two or three years and it seems to come back quite well and it gets a lot more flowering stems and the, the feathery seed heads which is mainly the reason I grow these because I like the structure it adds in autumn and winter and if I'm honest I've been a bit lazy and when I cut these down in spring I've just left them on the ground look so yeah I just left them on the ground so I need to tidy them away really but I was a bit lazy and I cut them and I just left them there but I need to put them in the compost but division is a really good way of getting more plants and I'll put in some clips and I'll show you some of the other plants that I've grown from Division as well. And I've actually grown more of this Nifophia, there's some in my front garden that's growing, that I grew from dividing this one up one year. So this grass here was grown from dividing an old plant we had that used to be in another part. Um, I'll probably divide this again when it gets a bit bigger so we can get even more plants just from this. And I love this grass because it makes a nice noise when the wind passes through it and it also looks really nice with the variegated leaves and this willow here which I'm sort of growing into like a I was going to pollard it but I've grown it tall and I'm going to put it into a bit of a pom pom at the top and this was grown from a cutting from a willow that's now gone by our greenhouse I took a cutting I thought keep it as a memory from that tree so you didn't forget it and I took a cutting, well two cuttings actually the other one's not growing as well and this one and you can see it's got catkins coming on it now but it's doing really really well and um, I've just seen there's loads and loads of caterpillars on it and that's what's been eating the leaves of it and that's quite interesting actually I haven't seen them before there's loads and loads and loads of caterpillars on there but I'm just going to leave them because then it saves them eating all of my vegetable plants rather than eating food they'll be eating the willow tree which will happily grow back 
and the fourth way that you can get plants for just about completely free or most of the time free or very cheap at least cheaper than buying from a proper shop is when people in your locality so neighbours maybe are giving away plants that they've divided or they've grown from their home saved seeds if they've got too many plants they might be giving them away for free so make sure you ask around so say you don't have a tomato plant go and knock on the door or maybe not at the moment maybe give them a message or a text or a phone call and just ask nicely if they've got any spare plants of anything and you could just do a bit of a plant swap so if they've got a plant that you haven't got and you've got a plant that they haven't got just swap it and then you'll both have the plants that you want and you won't have paid anything for it so that's just a really good way that's sort of I think it's called bartering as well which is a big way of getting things for free and you can also do things like sharing things like tools and things between each other so rather than buying a tool that you don't have you could ask if they've got it and they sh you could share tools and vice versa so if they need something one day you give it so it's just about giving and sharing and there's also a fifth a slightly more minor way of getting free things which is with potatoes mainly and things like uh, New Zealand yam and potatoes and tuber things is by when you ha if you store loads if you grow loads and loads of potatoes and you store some over winter you can use some of them as a seed potato the next year so you could store them well and then you could chit some really strong ones next year and then you could get free potatoes every single year then which is a really easy way of doing it and that's probably easier than saving your own seeds well it still technically is saving your own seeds but it's easier than saving seeds normal the normal way you could also do this with dahlias as well in early spring you can cut off a tuber and you can grow that tuber by itself but I find cuttings are much easier because then you don't really inhibit the growth of the main mother plant because the main plant then will be able to grow it will be able to grow the same size because that tuber that you took a cutting from will send up a new shoot whereas if you take a cutting from a tuber it'll make that root ball of the original tu uh, dahlia a lot smaller but I do think you do need to control the size of your dahlia root bulbs sometimes because mine are starting to get a bit too big to soar over winter last year I had one and it was probably close to the size of this bucket and I had to find a cardboard box or a crate to be able to fit that in which was quite a challenge but I did find it in the end so this is the dahlia here that I took two cuttings from and as you can see it's no smaller than it would have been anyway and it has actually, it did actually get frosted in May with the last frost that we had as you can see there's some of the leaves are a bit yellowed and crispy but other than that it's doing really really well and it's actually got a flower bud coming on it now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed these as well because I've got another one over there I, could, I forgot where I put it actually I'm going to feed them so that they have really good flowers and blooms this year and it will also if you feed and get stronger plants it reduces the risk of slug attack because when plants are really strong the slugs don't tend to go for them as much but when you've got weaker plants that wilt more often the slugs will go for them because when so what slugs do bait essentially they're they're composters they go around and they clear up the dead things or the things that aren't growing well they go around and they eat it and then obviously they'll put it out and it'll compost down into the ground and they're composters so technically they're doing a really good job for your garden and that's why it's important to have an all-round ecosystem in your garden and when you have stronger plants the slugs won't see it as a way to compost it down they'll see that it's just a good plant growing there they don't need to compost that down so that's why having strong plants is better than weak plants and feeding your plants is good because it will help them grow bigger and stronger which will also stop the slugs attacking them I'm just going to show you how I'm going to take a cutting from my white currant plant so all I've got is a pot of compost that's been dampened with a watering can and a sharp pair of secateurs and um, what you do is you take a good bit of stem it needs to be this year's fresh growth as well just like that and make sure it's a clean cut so go right to the back of secateurs and do a quick cut and what you do then is you take these older leaves off because these will lose water from the plant which means it'll dry up and it won't grow roots and then the roots should grow from the hairs and the leaf nodes which is where the leaves grow out and the buds 
and you should cut just under a bud. So where there's a bud here, I'll just cut it there. And then I'll get my pot of compost. And I'll stick it down the side and firm it down a bit so that this contact with the soil from the cutting. And I'm just gonna cut another one and then I'll put it in the same. And after a few weeks, they should start to grow. And then when you take them out of the pot and there's roots there, you can pot them on into their own individual pots or grow them on in the beds like I'm going to do. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learnt something. And if you have any further questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. Please make sure you like, subscribe and please share with any friends who'd love to know how to get free plants as well. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.